Howdy, 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 my name's Inachi Sasuke, and welcome back to Let's Read Homestuck. In the last episode, we uh, started the next act, and we're meeting the new characters from the new universe that was created by the, uh, Alpha Kids? It was the Beta Kids. I think it's the Beta Kids. I don't, I, I'm bad at remembering how that works. Anyway, in this episode, we got to answer us a Jake. Golgotha's terror began bothering Gutsy Gumshoe at 11.05. Jane, forgive my botherations, I know this is meant to be a spanking rip-snorter of a day for you and all, but do you happen to know where the devil fucking dickens Mr. Strider might be? Oh, that's fine. I've been meaning to message you sooner, actually, but I suppose in all the hubbub today, it's... It plumb slipped my mind. Which is shocking. A shocking fact on its lonesome, considering what I have to tell you. Egad! Loosens collar a bit. As for this Strider business... Mm, He's an elusive guy, Jake. You know that. I talked to him yesterday. That's about as much help as I can be. Shoot. I really need to ask him something, but he's got his blasted autoresponder turned on. <laughs> I love that thing. He wouldn't be pleased to hear you say that. Why do you need... What do you need with him? Does this have to do with your crazy pen pal project? It most certainly does, and time is of the essence. Today is the day I have to finish it and send it. Not a day later. So you see why I'm feeling really freaking discombobulated at the moment. Sorry, Jay. This would be the birthday present for your grandmother? No, it's for your grandfather, simply to be relayed to him by my grandmother. A joint gift to him from she and I. Her and me. What? Who and you? Who and you now? A joint gift from her and me. Grammar, Jake! Oh, for freak's flippin' sake, Jane, this is no time for your prudish pedantry. Leave your bookish malarkey in the dusty old library somewhere. I have an adventure to get on with. So if I have this straight... The big thing hogging up your plate today is not this marvelous new game which I have invited you to play with me, but finishing a robotic rabbit to give to my dead pop-pop? Bingo! Double pistols and a wink. You are a very strange and silly boy. Please, Jane, we've addressed this. I am sending the gift back in time to when they are both alive and about our age, or something like that. Something funny is going on here that I have not fully grappled yet, but dag nab it if I'm not going to see it through. Well, Godspeed, then. I do hope you can pull it off. Are you being fresh with me now? No! Look, Jane, I know you've never believed me, and I th and you think everything I say is a big cockamamie goof-off, but I think today of all days is when you should start t taking some more things more seriously. Especially since I've always had your back. I have every always believed in you. Hey, I believe in you too. However, believing somebody isn't the same thing as believing in somebody. But that much said, I think I may be that maybe I'm getting ready to believe some of the wild stories I've heard. Or, if not believe outright, reserve judgment on at least. Is that so? I don't know. I'm still not sure what to think, but what I wanted to tell you this morning was I had a really wild dream last night, and you were in it. Oh my, glasses fog up, fumbles for a kerchief. Shh, not like that. It was so real, I think we were in the game even though we haven't started playing yet. I don't know what to make of it, whether it was a vision of the future or something that exists now, or if it was just a really lucid dream due to excitement. What was I doing there? Um, not a heck of a lot. I really want to tell you all about it, but it will ha- it will take some time to explain, and we both have things to attend to. You with your time-traveling rabbit work, and I my vigilant window-gazing. Too true. Let us reconvene later and sort out all this shit at a leisurely pace. Yes, okay, good luck, Jake. Okay to you- Okay, you too, Jane. Bye! Golgotha's terror ceased bothering Gutsy Gumshoe. Check clock. Hold the phone. 11.10. You almost forgot! One minute till the Empire's rebranding launch. You wonder if it will live up to the hype. Guess you'll find out. Wait a minute. You ride out another 60 seconds and... Huh? Something happened to your baking chest. Did the logo just change? You wonder what else may have been affected. Look around. Yep, this one changed too. Parker Core is nothing if not thorough with its branding tactics. You guess it's pretty cool? It's just a fork instead of a spoon. Not the most awe-inspiring logo you've ever seen, but who are you to judge? Aside from the future owner of the company, you make a mental note that when you turn 18 and inherit the company, you will change it back to a spoon. You love the spoon. Examine Bowl Buster. Sure enough, the Junior Batter Master's Bowlkin Stirring Solution 50,000 has been affected too, along with your specimens. Try flipping switch. You try the broken switch again. Hey look, it does something now! Toggling your trusty bowl buster between a stirring solution and a poking solution. Neat! Back to the window. Nope, still nothing. You surely would have heard the truck pull up. You guess the Empire wasn't able to coordinate the mail with its rebranding. Maybe the US Postal Service is the one thing it doesn't have in its 
that it doesn't have its gnarled claws in yet? Another mental note. Sink gnarled claws into post office when you take over. Open the chest. You decide to pass the time by rummaging through your baking chest and- Hang on, maybe later. Answer. Uranian Umbra began cheering Gutsy Gumshoe. Good morning, lovely. Why, hello! So I guess today is finally the day you make everything better. Smiley face? It is the day where after the legendary octet of mutual progen progenitoriety will come together and heal a great breach in paradox space. A day delivered through 80 billion years and four distinct universal instances worth of unfathomable turbulence. And while the emerald eye of this storm is fixed in the abyss forever, today you are poised to escape its scowl once and for all. By sky's guiding light, you may leave behind its turning arms of bright colors and mayhem, and secure peace for your cosmic progeny for all duration. And if you were to meet this departure with trepidation, I would understand! But I also would ask, is there nothing I can do to ease your mind? Gosh, so formal today. Yes. I'm afraid I'm guilty of rehearsing this pep talk well in advance. I thought you deserved a proper send-off. No. Well then, is there nothing I can do? It was a serious question. You needn't worry about easing my nerves. If it weren't for you, I wouldn't be nearly as thrilled about today as I am. Splendid! But remember, I will be here to help whilst refraining from casual spoilers to the re best of my ability. That is reassuring. Have you corresponded with your first designated co-player yet? No, I haven't seen her online to yet today. I'm really hoping the lot won't flake out on me this time. Have you heard from her? Not the, not the today that is local to you. Though I do have a wee bit more trouble monitoring her than the rest of you. Curious dark patches in transmission. <laughs> Still, I wouldn't fret over it. She is as good a chum as any you have and should come through ultimately, even if things seem dire. If you say so. Oh, I wanted to tell you. I had an amazing dream last night. Blimey! I believe it may have been the sort you described, a dream of awakening, presuming I haven't just flat out lost my marbles. Indeed, I'm sure it was. I knew you would wake up soon. Might you describe what you saw? I was in a bright gold city. Above above was a brilliant blue sky, but the horizon was dark as night. Was this the place you told me about? What was it called? Ah, oh, shucks, does this count as a casual spoiler? Not at all! This was a simple detail about the realm you were about to explore, without directly involving your future decisions of consequence. The place you visited was called Prospit. It is where I have woken up every time I've gone to sleep for most of my life. I didn't see you there, at least I don't think I did. No, you wouldn't have. My Prospit is an alternate version from yours. In a completely different session, quite far afield from your reality. It, if we are ever to meet in person, it is unlikely to be while you playing our respective games. Okay, then. I mentioned this briefly to Jake, and he didn't have much to say before we parted ways. I will gather that if this is all true, it means Jake had not awoken yet? I think this is for you to determine in time. What is your hunch? I don't know, but there was one thing about the dream that was very troubling. I'm becoming nervous to consider what it might mean. Understandable, but it will be important to practice patience today. You have a long road ahead of you, and many questions will be answered in time. But we could talk over it later. Now, we both have games to prepare for. I know you could never fully appreciate what this actually meant, but I took much care of to sync up these conversations with you on the same day that I began playing as well. That way we could journey through our sessions together and compare notes. Hmm. I'm still not sure I appreciate what that means, but I appreciate that a nice gesture has been made if you say so. I guess I should just start believing all of this now, huh? Rather than learning it to be true later and feeling the fool for all my convergently skepticism. Wink. For starters, I guess I could drop my reservations about your story. Will you? I can... Hmm, I think I just started bleeding, sorry. Uh, I can write off much to tomfoolery as I'm no stranger to a good prank myself. But quite honestly, you seem too kind for this charade. Not the type I'd expect to trot out with such persistent falsehoods beyond their humorous welcome. So what do I know? Consarnit, maybe you are an alien girl from Uranus, and together we are about to play a game which determines the fate of existence. Sign me up! Oh, heh <laughs> heh. But I never claimed to be from that planet, which is only in the far reaches of your solar system. In fact, I'm from much farther away, a different universe altogether. But if you truly mean it, thank you for believing me! 
Now, Jane, my lovely, let us prepare for this adventure. Remember what I said about the need for patience. Patience with your friends, patience for your growth as a hero of life, and patience for becoming, for the coming of another four of legend. A hero of breath and of light and of time and of space. And if you still find yourself in doubt, just check the inscription on that big old book downstairs. After all, if you can't trust words written by your own hand, then what use is trust at all? Kisses. Uranian Umbra cease cheering gutsy gumshoe. Okay, back to the chest. I'm just checking on the fact that I made my mouth bleed. Sorry. Okay, I think it's fine now. You return to your baking chest, which you use for mainly use mainly for storing quality breaking apparatus and a few other odds and ends. Oh, hello, Pop Pop. His friendly face is there to greet you every time you open your chest. <sighs> you would have loved to meet him. Unfortunately, his life was cut short at the tender age of 86 in a tragic accident. Coincidentally, on the same day you were born, or so your dad tells you. Pop Pop Crocker was a legendary comedian, following in the footsteps of his grandfather, who was... Who, of course, was the greatest southern pranking legend of all time. One day, you hope to follow in Pop-Pop's, uh, too. But then, if the Whoppers you have been told recently have any truth to them, maybe you'll get to meet him after all. It seems too good to be true. The only relationship you have ever had with him are through video footage of his vaudevillian antics on stage. Or through his role as Judge Johnny Stone in one of your favorite old sitcoms, Night Court. Rummage around. Just your basics when it comes to pranking. A few clever disguises, a name brand dunce cap, a slightly abridged edition of Sassaker's text, updated for the modern prankster and scrubbed of a few of the more egregious, julep-fueled racial slurs, several other stray books, your company's prototypical model for the Grist Widget 12,000, and of course your super handy Unreal Errors Thoughtwave tiara top for the young go-getting junior battermaster on the go. Dump the chest. Might as well get all this crap out of here and take it with you. You never know when you might need it. You shut the chest and- Oh, hello, Harry Anderson. Always a pleasure to see you there. He is also one of your idols, and as it happens, has a bit of a history with your pop-up. They were rivals on the vaudevillian- the vaudeville comedy and magic act circuit. Eventually, the less competent Anderson was shamed out of the industry and went on to the greener pastures in the private dicking biz. He became one of the hardest boiled detectives on the main streets of the Big Easy and later made a fortune off his memoirs, ghost written by Mike Cavaney. Capture log all. Your Celadex is so great, you shudder to remember some of the old shitty fetch mode I used to struggle with when you were younger. Still learning the capture logging ropes. Fibonacci heap. LOL, the effing noob. Inspect books. You have a cookbook, which of course was made obsolete by your computerized talking bowl buster. You wouldn't dare part with it, though. Too many wonderful memories. There's Anderson's aforementioned book, Wise Guy. His, Cavani's, stories are gripping, in a way. And then there's the customized copy of Pony Pals, a gift to you on your 14th birthday from the slippery Mr. Strider. Each page contains lovingly handwritten commentary on the deeds of this intrepid young horse. Check out the Grist Widget. This thing's a piece of junk! It just wastes your boon dollars and destroys your cool gear to produce these stupid things that look like gushers. But unlike gushers, which serve many practical purposes like inducing vomiting and simulating the experience of eating plump insects, these things are totally useless. Insert hat card. Okay, you'll try it out with one of your less prized possessions to just to prove how dumb it is. You never like this hat much. It makes you look like a gnome and basically isn't funny at all. You pop the card in. The grist widget indicates that it will cost 10 boon dollars to convert this object into grist. That's not too bad, you guess. It's not like the currency has much value anyway. It was introduced as a sort of uh, BC Corp fun bucks to be used by youngsters specifically on qualifying merchant on online and stuff. Brilliant business strategy, really. As heiress to the, rep the Empire, you are naturally endowed with millions, which you have a reputation for being very generous with. You have been considering using your wealth to set up a scholarship fund to allow underprivileged kids to go to Boone College. Activate. See? Utterly pointless. You hope Crocker Corp was going somewhere with this technology, because if not, this product is first in line for getting the axe when you're in charge. Wear tiara top. You put on your highly fashionable Unreal Ares Thoughtwave tiara top and flip it on. It immediately hums to life as its blazing fast processes mingle with your thoughts. It is the most efficient computing technology in the world by far, as long as you don't wear it for too long, 
But aside from a few migraines, you can't possibly imagine any obey drawbacks that cease reproduction could come with submit, merge and consume your thoughts with embrace your calling, experimental technology, conform to social order, or stay asleep, extremely powerful, die, corporation, wait, what? Continue vigilant window gazing. Still no sign of the mail. Might as well keep the tiara top on while you look, even if it means suffering through all the bullshit pop-up ads. That way you can keep an eye out for Lalan while you're at it. Okay, there's no more things being said. Let's see. Olive Garden. Bacos. Green Giant. Broccoli and cheese sauce. All hail new Chief Justice of the U.S. Supreme Court. What? Obey, 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 obey. Uh, probably a picture of Ben Stiller. Speak of the devil fucking Dickens. Pipsy, Pipsy Nostalgic began t bothering Gutsy Gumshoe. Jane! Hey, Janie! Answer, please. Answer. Jane! Oh my god, overreact much? I've been I have kept you waiting for all two seconds. Where have you been today? No, we're just chilling here when all... When all of the sudden, all of a sudden, when all of the sudden, it hits me that we have something really fucking important, something really fucking important to talk about. This hit you just now? We made plans to get in touch early this morning, and I have seen neither hide nor hair of you all day. It hits me that J Jake's B day is coming up really soon, just a few days before mine. Remember, or I guess it it would be if it wasn't for the end of the world that's about to happen. Oh, for Pete's sake! I just wanted your advice on what to get him. Something sentimental, I guess, but I mean, I'm mostly tapped out of precious heirlooms at the moment, so I don't know. But not like anything coming on too strong. Something that says, this is Tilt's platonic and everything. No eyebrow raising funny biz is going on over here, but still says, you know, call me if you wanna. <sighs> now I know you're joking around to get my goat. Haha! <laughs> yeah, the goat getting thing, I mean, but joking, no, no, I think not. You don't think that if I didn't say he was off limits on account of. You being my best friend, I wouldn't be all the hell over that? Damn, that rugged sense of adventure, that delightful silly vernacular that's like, weirdly and bewitchingly not self-aware, those adorable teeth swoon. No, stop! Well shit, Jane, what am I even supposed to do? I can't hit on anybody, and apparently I can And I, to me, apparently, I can entertain nary a frisky thought about anybody because apparently everybody's off limits! Bunch of goddamn typos. Shit sucks. You don't even let me say your dad is hot, even though we both know he way the fuck is. I mean, come on, or come on, one, one, on. Yeah, because it's weird and you're drunk. Correction, drinking, present tense, grammar, Jane. I don't see why you don't try to court the favor of Mr. Strider. If you ask me, he and you are perfect for each other. Oh, Jane, so naive, so naive. Lordy, how can you be this far gone so early? It isn't even noon yet. You forget we live in very different time zones. It's a lot later here. You're three hours ahead of me. You'd be you would be amazed how much can happen in three hours. <sighs> what would your mother have to say if she caught you? Pretty sure she wouldn't give a shit. I mean, she's the one who stocked the goddamn liquor cabinets in the in the first place. I don't even think she ever had a drop in her life, probably. So why else is she putting it here? Putting it there it was like a passive aggressive dare for me, ag aggressive. Just the sort of mind game she would play. So even if your insane and paranoid theory happens to be true, your response is, Screw it, time to help myself to all this mind game booze. Yup. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you are completely impossible like this. I cannot believe you chose to do this today of all days. I should have known better. Here I am, waking up right and early, waiting all day with my nose pressed against this glass for the mail to come, and wondering if you'll ever log on, all the while you're just getting blind, stinking, shockner bottom drunk. What you waiting for in the mail? Is something happening today or something? <laughs> the Alpha! Jeez Louise, you're hopeless. Oh yeah, that thing. Are you at all ready to play it if it comes? I guess, but... You sure you even want to play this thing? You know it's just what the Batter Witch wants you to do. Not this again. If you want to go ahead and be a chump, Jane, it's your call, I'm just saying. I know what a chump looks like, and you don't look like no chump I ever saw. If you go through with this, I'll have to add your pro your poor file to my chump roll, which is like this real actual thing I maintain. Instead of being a joke? Is that what you want? Is that is that what you want? Want? 
The Batter Witch does not exist. It's an idiotic urban legend. How many times have I explained this? My great-great-grandmother, who founded the company and is accused of holding this identity, would have to be almost 200 years old if she were still alive today. The idea is such preposterous hogwash, it's hardly worth dignifying with a rational response. The iconic face of the company isn't even a real person! She was fabricated long ago by the company's fledgling years. Right, as, you know, an alter ego for some something more sinister. Such... Such cuckoo bird nonsense. In any case, I don't understand the nature of this second guessing, besides chalking it up to your unwelcome inebriation. We had agreed you would play with me. You sounded excited about it. Have you even obtained your copy yet? Um, heh. <laughs> yes, obtained. Sure did. Through your various technologically cryptographic means, I presume? Oh, you bet! Hack the shit out of those tight mainframes and all. Said jackpot like a bunch of times. All those zippers and boob bobby traps. Backdoor Trojans and whatnot were no match for my codes, Snicker. I'm quizzically narrowing my eyes to solve the joke you were attempting, assuming it even is one. Okay, Jane, what I'm saying is that in the parlance of baking, because I, I know that is what gets you off, is that it was a fucking cake wake, uh, cakewalk. Oh. Like, by which I mean not to say, her her, I'm the hottest shit hacksaw bitch you ever knew, as... As dead lay to the corporate grid ass, she is <laughs> beautiful, which I am. But what I mean is, she wasn't even guarded. It was just some files that were there, unsecured, and I took them. Jacked them right off of that intraweb tel telematrix, then applied some lipstick, femme fatale style. It was like, shit, yes, I am all kinds of know-how to use my web browser to download several files. Really? Yeah, so now I got it if you really want to play, which you shouldn't. Hmm, that is a bit puzzling. I thought this software was highly proprietary. I told you, she wants you to play. Wants us all to. Part of her big plans. And you're playing right into them. Like, a ch... Ump. Yes, I know. You've made yourself clear. But what doesn't add up about your story is, I believe somebody doesn't want me to play. How else do you explain the recent attempts on my life? No. Someone out, of, out there wants the stock price to take a hit? There? Or... It's just more connivings of the witch. So this hypothetical monstrosity wants me to succeed, but also wants me to die? Makes a lot of sense. Wouldn't put it past her. Makes you feel persecuted. Redoubles your determination to play. You advance her plans in whatever incomprehensible way until suddenly you did everything she needed you to do. At which point you become crazy expendable, yo. And then she expends you like a wad of boom dollars on shitty Br BC merch. I see, this is sounding less like crack a crackpot conspiracy theory by the minute. Whatever, all I'm saying is a bunch of stuff that's deaf true to the max. I'll send this file to you though, and what you do with it is up to you. So, you want it now or what? <coughs> it's tempting, and I'm curious as heck to play it, but the mail should be coming any minute. I've waited this long for it, so I might as well use the official disk address to me. When it comes, I do hope you'll change your tune. Not to mention, brew yourself a pot of coffee and sober your drunk butt up. My drunk bud's tune will stay as unchanged as it will remain unnot drunk. Make her my barley compare. Make make her my barley can coherent words. Woohoo! Okay, fair enough. But I believe that when we start playing together, you'll come around. Personally, I can barely contain my excitement over it. If years ago someone told me, which incidentally someone did, that today I would have an exclusive opportunity to play what is absolutely the most cutting-edge immersive simulation game ever released, developed by a company which has already done so much for the advancement of humanity, I would have said, Shucks, Buster, sign me up! Jane? Yes? Jane? What? Jane, did you know that I am utterly in love with the fact that I have a best friend who says things like, Shucks, Buster, shush you, drunkie! Oh, 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 oh! oh. What the fuck? The thing! The flappy thing! The flappy swingy doodad! The arm dealie! The daily Lalan! The daily! What? The the god darned red swingy flappy lever arm thingamabob! Whatever it's called! On the mailbox! Breathe, Crocker! Slow breaths like this! I breathe irregularly, FYI. It's up! It's up! It's up! It's up! Don't don't get a lot of mail out here, and I'm and I'm no mail expert expert, but doesn't that mean not the right thing? Like, you're supposed to put it up if you want something taken away, not have the guy put it up if mail comes. I think your mailman is po quite, quite possibly a dumbass. 
No, who cares about that? The dealy! The dealy! It's up, it's up! It's here, it's here, it's here! Ah! Laugh my ass so fucking... Laugh my fast so fucking O oh, at this. BRRB! Gutsy Gumshoe sees bothering Tipsy no uh, Nostalgic. Okay, so... In the next episode, Jane will prepare to retrieve the mail. I'm gonna save the game because the last time I saved the game, I went to load the game and it was like, there are no saved games. <laughs> so, y'all saw it. Y'all saw me save the game. If it says the game is not saved, I have proof from, like, four people on the internet that I did and the website is stupid. Anyway, this has been Anashi Sasuke. This was episode 70 of Let's Read Homestuck. And in the next episode, Jane's gonna go retrieve the mail. So... I will see you next time. Later.